Hello, good afternoon. I am Becky Keith from Intelliboard. Intelliboard is a learning analytics platform that brings together your Moodle learning data with other learning data sources to provide you insights and metrics on success. And I'm here today with Dave Kelly. He is one of our clients. Oh, am I not loud enough? Is better. Okay. Um, one of our clients from the the United States, and he is going to share his story, his user story, on how he deployed learning analytics with his company. All right. So before we get started, just a level set on learning analytics and our definition of learning analytics. Um, at its base form, it's pulling your learning data together in a list or a report to um, you know to organize your data. But a stronger learning analytics platform allows you to summarize, make comparisons, look at trends over time, and then provide you insight to interpret that data and, and to make it actionable. So at IntelliBoard, we have our framework where we bring your data together, analyze it, make predictions, so predictions of learners at risk, learners who aren't, won't complete, um, risk for your courses, provide you notifications, you make the interventions, that data comes back in, we analyze the interventions, and, and the cycle continues. All right, so Dave, tell us a little bit about Sensei. Well, thank you for uh, coming today, everyone. I greatly appreciate it, and hopefully um, be able to share some stuff that you guys can take back with you uh, to your institutions. So Sensei is a cybersecurity company. Sensei stands for Sensible Cyber. We mainly service um, small and medium-sized organizations, so organizations of 500 employees or less is generally our sweet spot. And what you're looking at in the box there is not only all of the services that we provide to our clients as one pa cybersecurity package, but every one of those is data that we need to then present to our clients, right, in an understandable way. So on the left-hand side, you see the cyber health evaluation that generates your Sensei score. Uh, in the U.S., you know, we have this credit score, so it's calibrated like a U.S. credit score. So if you have an 800, you're going to get the best interest rates. So if you have an 800 cybersecurity score, you're doing everything that you should be doing to protect your information. If you're 700, you can get still get credit, but, but not as, as a good of a rate. And if you're 600 or below, good luck. Uh, and so it just makes sense to everyone that doesn't understand cyber to, to start with that number. If you work your way over to the right, um, that, that Sensei score then generates uh, our cyber health plan for our clients, right? So what do they need to improve that score? And each one of those boxes uh, appears not only in our uh, Moodle instance, but then the data gets fed into IntelliBoard for our clients, so our clients can track all of these metrics. So we have things like a policy library. Um, most of the time, you know, you get policies when you onboard and you forget about them, right? So we're constantly training folks on these cybersecurity awareness and also what, are, what is our company policy and what should we be doing and not be doing? Because 88% of cyber attacks uh, to this day are still caused by a user, a user making a mistake. As we walk through these, um, I'll talk about the dashboard and sort of how we brought that data forward to our clients. But just to say, each one of those things comes into uh, either through Moodle or directly into IntelliBoard and then gets displayed to our clients. Oh, hit the next slide. Okay, so this is our Moodle landing page. So this is what our clients see when they first uh, come into Moodle. So this is where they get their, their cyber awareness training served up. We have tutorials on how to secure your application. So in cybersecurity, there are a lot of things that live outside of your boundary. You know, we're all, we all have mobile devices. Um, our marketing teams are using social media to do, um, you know, marketing and so forth. And how do we secure those things that are outside of our boundary? So that's a tutorial. Um, you can see on the bottom left, that's the cyber health evaluation. So that is a proprietary algorithm that we've developed. It examines uh, 106 cybersecurity data points, and that's what spits out uh, your Sensei score. Also have um, policy library and then incident response planning. But on the upper left-hand side, 
where it says cyber health dashboard, that's what takes us to our IntelliBoard instance and pre presents this data in an understandable way to our clients. So everybody who's using Moodle is probably familiar with this, right? It's the quiz uh, uh, format. So the cyber health evaluation starts out uh, with that quiz. We have a client uh, and their IT team generally uh, on a consultation and we walk through it. Uh, we've got it down now to 39 questions that examine the 106 data points and they're weighted based upon what is the most likely thing happening today uh, in the cyber world that's going to cause a problem for your organization or your institution. This is our uh, sort of what our training modules look like. So we've really positioned our cyber awareness training more as an employee benefit as opposed to, oh crap, I have to take more training, right? And how we do that is we're really trying to, with a lot of remote working and things going on right now, we're really trying to make every single video um, B, what can I do at home to secure myself at home? I have kids online. How do, I, how do I do this in my personal life? And oh, by the way, we also have a policy. So your policy training and everything comes into play here, um, served up to Moodle, and then we're analyzing that um, and serving it up to our, to our clients on IntelliBoard. And we'll get into that in just a second. Thank you. So, you know, when Dave came to us, he had the learning figured out. The learning data, the learning is, is happening in Moodle. Obviously, it, it, looks, it looks great. But he also came with very specific challenges and key data fields that he, that he needed to, to be able to measure that, that cyber score and, and prove that the learning, how do you, prove that the learning is preparing the clients and that they are um, going to be successful and not click on the link or download the, the file when it is sent to them. So what challenges did you have, Dave, getting the, that data out of, out of Moodle? Yeah, I think first and foremost, right, we needed um, something that was easy for the clients to look at and understand, right? Um, business professionals are not cybersecurity experts. So how do we take a complex set of data and show it to a client in a way that they're going to understand it? That was the very first um, challenge and um, it was one of the things that really attracted us to a teleboard at the beginning because we can do this in graphs and charts very simply. Um, I think secondarily, I talked a little bit about the proprietary algorithm that generates the Sensei score. We needed to protect that but then also be able to show um, the information that the clients needed to see in relation to that score without divulging how the algorithm is sort of working. Um, and then also, and I think we'll talk about this a little bit more in more detail, you know, in cybersecurity, um, it's really important that only the users who have access, who have need to see data and authorization to see data can see that data, right? So we needed a platform that allowed us to be role-based whereby our internal employees have a role and they can see certain data. The client has a role and they can see certain data and they may even have um, employees that need to see a, a subset of that data, right? So those are probably the key, the key points from the list. Yeah. And, you know, you identified what success looks like and then, um, you know, linking together the, the training, the learning, and then the success and measuring um, the, the training with that success. So now that we've seen what your uh, Moodle looks like, let's see what you've done with IntelliBoard. So this is your, your main um, overall dashboard. So tell us, tell us what data um, you have here. I'll, I'll work from the top down. So the first thing you're seeing sort of in the dark blue box there is um, that's a real-time RSS feed of cyber threats. So we're serving that up in IntelliBoard real time to clients. Um, we tune it based on an inventory that we bring in so we know sort of what applications clients are logging into, what software they have, what hardware they have. And we serve that up to them in real time. So they can click on each one of those things if there's a vulnerability that they need to address. Um, it's coming in through the RSS feed into their, into their specific dashboard related to them. As we work our way down, you can sort of see the Sensei score over time. Uh, so again, that's our, that on the left hand side is with this particular client is where we started with them and as we work with them through their cyber health plan, you can see their score going up. Occasionally the score will go down um, based on some other factors and I could talk a little bit about that uh, later. 
Below that, um, in the two bar graphs, the one on the left is, um, I should have mentioned that the cyber health evaluation is based on the NIST standards. So you have identify, protect, detect, respond, recover. Each one of those things makes uh, a good cybersecurity uh, posture for your organization. So we're tracking each one of those. How are they doing in each one of those categories? On the right hand side, uh, more relevant probably to educational institutions is their training, right? So that's one of the metrics that can take the score down. So if we're not getting 80% compliance on the training, a minimum of 80%, then that, that score can go down. So by virtue of the client looking at the score and being engaged with the score, everybody's competitive, they want to have a high score, it helps drive that adoption of the training because they look at that and they know their score went down and now they can start to push out, hey folks, we need you to take this, this training. And then at the bottom are some other things that we're mentioning. I think we'll get into those in, a, in another slide. Yeah, so it's that one, it's the one location, it's the one place that brings everything together with the key, key critical data. So this is for um, Sensei and their advocates, but it could be an advisor dashboard at an institution or a learner dashboard or an instructor dashboard. Um, So this next one is for your advocates. So advocates are your Sensei staff, your Sensei employees. So how, how do they use this dashboard differently than your overall dashboard? Yeah, one, one thing that's great about this is we build it once, right, and then we can use it for multiple use cases. So you'll see as we go through these slides, the charts look similar, right, but based upon your user role or based upon your need to know information, the dashboards can change. So in this case, what we're showing is there's several things that we have to monitor for clients where we don't have direct access to the data, right? We know what the information is, but either we can't get access to the data for some reason or we're just not plugged into that information. Could be a legacy system, could be, you know, lots of reasons. Um, in this case, we, we're doing external vulnerability scans and dark web scans for our clients. That data set is a, is a proprietary data set we can't build an API to connect it to the dashboard. So what's really nice about this is there's something that we use called Inform that allows our advocates to run those scans and very quickly enter that information in five boxes into the dashboard and then it displays it as if we were connected. So we have real-time connections and some manual things that we have to put into the dashboard but it's all there um, sort of in one uh, source of truth for the client. Right, and that can live inside Moodle as an LTI as well. So wherever your users are, they, it could be coming to IntelliBoard or instructors, advisors, if they're inside Moodle, IntelliBoard can live inside Moodle. So in this one dashboard, he's bringing together the Moodle data, but then also using Inform additional data sets. So at an institution, it could be interventions, it could be performance events, it could be any, any information that, could, that gets added to the data can then be tied to the learning data, and that's where you start to see the impact of your interventions, because that data comes right back in with the learning data. And it's in that one spot, so the one place, the one source of truth for your advisors to go and see um, learners at risk or, in your case, um, companies at risk. In addition to the form, it could be a CSV file of data. So you can bring in any data source um, into IntelliBoard and combine it with your learning data. So similar, similar dashboard, but different use. So building it once and then applying it to, to other users. So this one is for your managers, and that's the managers at the, the, the clients, your, your client manager. So tell us about how your um, client managers utilize the dashboard. Yeah, so when we're talking about client managers, we're typically talking about either the leadership team inside the company or folks that are tasked with IT, right? And so this is the dashboard that they look at. Um, to determine how are we performing, right? So how are we performing not only on our Sensei score, but are our employees compl complying with the training? Are they learning from the training? Um, where do we need to improve, right? So by consistently looking at this, right, and we can drill down, we don't have a drill down slide here, oh, it's actually at the bottom. So if you look at the bottom, it's a little hard to see, but you can drill down into each one of those bars and you can see actually by percentage, how you're performing and what makes up that overall total, which has helped us to, when we have our client advocates, our cyber advocates talk to the client. Uh, when they're looking at this on a regular basis 
it helps us to advise them on the things that they need to be doing to improve. They immediately know because they look at it and they know, okay, we're not doing this. What do we need to do to improve this particular aspect of our cybersecurity posture? Right, and this dashboard is automatically filtered to each client. So you build it once, deploy it, and each client is only seeing their data. So it's the same in an institution. If you, you know, build that learner dashboard or the instructor dashboard, and when it deploys, every instructor sees the data that they have permission to see. Yeah, and I think one other thing that's great about that is so we have, you know, multiple clients on the platform, but from an internal perspective, when our people are looking at it, it's the same dashboard to them. It's just a different set of data for that individual client. So once they look at it and understand how to navigate it, it's the same for every client. It's just different data. Right. And, you know, your risk is identified through an algorithm that you created. Um, but each client, we, we work with you to identify, like, what does success look like? And then how would you individually define risk? So um, it could be a calculation. We have machine-based um, predictive learning analytics as well as rule-based where you create what you think risk should be and, and, you know, adding that critical data to the dashboard and then having the ability to input that intervention um, is powerful. So, great. All right, so we've talked through a lot of challenges that you have overcome um, deploying your learning analytics. Uh, how has IntelliBoard supported that process? Yeah, I think I, each one of these bullets is um, important. Um, you know, engagement and fidelity of corporate learning. So by virtue of being able to integrate the algorithmic score with some of the other things that we're trying to get the clients to do on one dashboard automatically creates that engagement because they know and they have to do these things in order to improve that score. So having them see that on one dashboard, um, really important. Compliance, super important to us. We're a cybersecurity company. You know, we need to make sure that uh, folks have access to only the data that they're authorized to have access to and that we can clearly identify those roles and that we can have control over that when we talk to our clients. So very easy to do uh, with the platform um, and very happy with that. Um, compare training results, results with performance. I can tell you a really good story about this. So we had a client reach out to us about two weeks ago uh, and telling us that he had almost wired $100,000 US dollars to uh, a fraudster, so a cyber criminal. And what happened was he had taken a training on business email compromise. So through our platform, right, and recognized this as a potential business email compromise and then dug into it a little bit further and found out that's exactly what's happening. So what had happened was his, his somebody had been squatting in his um, vendor's database, or I'm sorry, in their email, and was waiting for something to happen, right? They didn't change the password. They didn't take over anything. They were just in there. And when our client sent an email to them saying, hey, we're about to pay this invoice, just letting you know it's going to come out on the 3rd. Um, they took that client's email, moved it to the RSS feed so that particular client couldn't see it anymore, and then responded and said, hey, our banking information's changed. Thank you for letting us know you're paying us on the 3rd. Here's our new banking information. This is a really common thing that's happening right now. We've seen it all over the place, and we had created in real time a training video on this because we had been seeing it. And because he had that training video, he recognized it. He did the extra steps to call the person and confirm. And they were like, no, I didn't change my banking information. And also, that client didn't know that someone was in their system. Right? So a really good tie-in to how the training helps them, um, you know, recognize things in the real world to save, to save money. That could have been a really, um, I think that company has 60, 60 employees. So the 100K was no, um, you know, small amount to them. That is a great story of impact. Do you have any other wins with IntelliBoard? Sure, I have. I have a really um, like one of our one of our favorite clients actually is a software development company, and you know I, I come from that world, so I know like when it comes to security, we're all just trying to get code out the door, right? So we're not necessarily thinking about security. And when we first spoke with this client, and they first did their Sensei score, they actually scored an eight. So an eight out of a thousand. Our client success person who was doing the score actually reached out to me and said, hey, I think the algorithm's broken. I, 
these people scored an eight, right? So I immediately jump in and look and said, no, they scored an eight. Um, so, you know, over the course of um, about five months, we got them up to a 650. Uh, and today, they're at a 796. So four points away from that 800, which is what we're trying to get all of our clients to, right? So it's a really great success story. And they, by using the IntelliBoard dashboard, right, we're continuously monitoring where's my score at, how are we doing, um, and then we were helping them sort of prioritize the things that they need to do uh, to improve that score, right? Hey, let's get you, here's the things that are most important because this is your biggest risk vector. So let's get those things done first. And then secondarily, let's work on the things that are easier for you that are going to incrementally improve your score. So really great success story and really ha they became, um, you know, really aggressive about improving their score as fast as they could, which, which we loved. And that's because they were seeing everything kind of in one place. Yeah. That visibility and, and identifying, and you've, you've identified the key metric, the metric that is most valuable. Um, so, so what Dave and Sensei has done is, is kind of follow this. They've identified what um, success looks like or what data is most critical and built um, an algorithm. It could be a, a calculation. It could be um, pacing for a K-12 school. It could be based on engagement or participation in, in higher ed. But, you know, identify the critical data that will help you achieve that learning goal. So you're delivering training or, or teaching instruction. What does success look like? So if you start with what success looks like, what the real world goal is, and then tying that training to that to the goal and, and making it action, actionable. So giving access to people who need the data. Right now data, it, it continues to be siloed. There's lots of different um, educational applications and, and, it, and it lives in multiple places. So having a secure way to bring the critical data, the data that, that, needs to, that they need to know, not the entire system, but bringing in the key data um, and, and providing access inside your Moodle, all one dashboard, and then allowing notifications. So Dave and I have actually been talking about notifications. Um, we have recently released uh, something new that he will hopefully be taking advantage of soon, which will be not even the, the advocates going to the dashboard, but that data being delivered right away. So if there's a drop, getting that data delivered immediately. And then, of course, tracking, tracking the results. If that can be inside IntelliBoard. Um, but the, the interventions, the communication, what impact did that have on the learning that ultimately um, leads to the success? Yeah, what, one thing I didn't mention too that I should have when I was looking at this that reminded me of it is the other thing that was really important to us is when, when the client's looking at their analytics, their learning analytics, right, we wanted it to be a seamless experience. So when they log into Moodle, they don't feel like they're leaving to go somewhere else. And the integration is really nice. Uh, it opens it up as if you never left Moodle. It stays right in the iframe. You can go back and forth between other instances of your Moodle, other parts of your Moodle, uh, without, without ever the user ever feeling like they've left, the, you know, left and gone to some other analytics platform. So that was also important for us. We wanted to have that smooth user experience. All right, Dave. If you all have any questions, we're right outside for myself or IntelliBoard or with Dave. But Dave, you rocked it. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm not sure what's happening. He rocked it, right? Join in. <laughs> Maybe you're a student logging into Moodle, you know you're going to graduate someday. Got a smile on your face, going to be an ace, posting in forums all over the place. We will, we will, Moodle, sing it! <laughs> we will, we will, Moodle, on your feet! Maybe you're a teacher logging into Moodle, you know you're going to graduate all these papers today. Got a smile on your face, gonna be an ace, posting those grades all over the place. Singing, we will, we will, Moodle. We will, we will, Moodle. Maybe you're a hacker logging 
I get into Moodle, you know you're gonna write a play. Plug in someday, got a smile on your face. Gonna be an ace, getting your code all over the place. We will, we will, Moodle. We will, we will, Moodle. Two more, come on, on your feet. We Jam that Intello Board is sponsoring. So come join us tonight and, and you can join in on the song. Well, I wanted to add another thing. Uh, my name is Anatoly, I'm CEO of Intel Board. When we started Intel Board, it was very small. We started talking with Martin about how we can work with data. Today, Intel Board is completely different than what it was seven years ago. But Moodle provides the most sophisticated data set. And out of all LMSs, and believe me, we work with everyone. And we are proud that today we are a certified part, uh, integrator with Moodle. And I'm super excited that we brought client who actually showcased it. Not that we're talking about how our technology is cool. It is cool. But when clients are using it, and they make a difference. So that's how we would like to support Moodle mission. We're not open source. However, we're doing everything to support that mission. And that's where our pride is. Uh, you can come to us at the booth. You can talk to Dave. You can talk to us. Dave is also hosted by Moodle US. And uh, this is another uh, proud thing for us, that how we collaborate all together. And it's not just about one company. It's about all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you.